Hey. All right. Hello. What's up? Did Did you uh, see the debate? Or at least uh, uh, I heard about it more. I didn't really get a chance to really get into it. Well, um, have, have you uh, watched a lot of Matt Dillahunty or Atheist Experience? Oh, yeah. I've watched him plenty of times. Have you uh, picked out any fallacies that he commits pretty often? Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, well, I mean, he's like the kind of guy that he always says that, you know, he's like very known for debunking all the arguments that Christians put forward. He's sort of known as that guy, but his objections tend to not be, you know, like, um, you know, his objections tend not to be that well thought out from what I know. Yeah. Um, he, he essentially says you can't figure out, therefore my position is correct. But oh, he, yeah. Yeah, he 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 wants the the whole lack of belief stuff as well. I know. I mean, I know IP, and IP is very you know well thought out. I seen his debate with um, Godless um, Engineer, and you know, and he I believe he did completely wreck him because he actually came prepared. Yes. Um, IP had all these studies, and Matt sort of just ignored them until the very end where he said, yeah, I'll check out the studies, but his entire argument was not focused on any sort of studies, just his personal anecdotal experiences. Well, yeah, I mean, I know Matt Dillahunty does believe, I believe he's one of the few atheists that actually does believe in objective morality. Um, he, I, I've seen a lot of times where he... At least he switches back and forth between subjective and objective because he, he talks in the objective sense, but then he says, yes, morality is subjective. And yeah, I mean... Oh, God. Yeah, I remember, like, in a debate with... I mean, not a debate. Like, I remember watching the atheist experience, and he said, I don't know if this points to him being, like, an objectivist, but he says, you know, obviously there is some reason, like, you know, why we have these behaviors and that why we do this. So there has to be, like, a right or wrong. I believe he said that a couple times. So, I mean, like you said, he he does go back and forth with it, although I do think he's more of an objectivist than I would say anyone else. Yeah, he, he would hold to that, but for, for the sake of argument, I think he would switch back and forth. Because yeah. when, when when you realize there is this sense of objective morality, I, I, I think you tend to see some sort of God is behind this, ontologically speaking. Yeah, I mean, I get that. Um, when you do debate um like with matt dillhoney like the biggest thing that he is known for is like he's known for being that knockdown guy where you talk to him and you know if when you talk to him you know like he's like that i'm trying to think how you word that like um when you call him on the the on the show he's used he's known as that guy that just knocks down arguments well ha have to well, probably three fourths of the people that actually call in are not apologists, just random people who come across his TV show and try and challenge him, but do not know as much as him. So, well, yeah, I mean, I know Ray, I believe Ray Comfort or someone or Daniel De can't say his last name. Dennett. Daniel De, not Dennett. Um, he's a uh, he's a Catholic apologist. Dan, I think is like. I don't know. I can't pronounce his last name for the life of me. Um, Max would, I mean, uh, Max would probably know his last name. Um, but yeah, um, I believe there's been a couple that have called. He, um, he kept challenging, you know, Matt has always tried to challenge William Lane Craig, but William Lane Craig's <laughs> always denied him. Well, well, yeah, he, th this is, um, Dawkins, of course, denied the or refuses to debate him because I think he knows that he that is way out of his field. But for some reason, Matt Delahanty thinks that he can take him on in his own fields, even though he, William Lane Craig, focuses people who have PhDs in the specific fields and actually challenges people who are above his own standards or at least above his field, like uh, Sean Carroll and so on. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, I do get that, but I mean, he has been. Um, that's one of my criticism with William Lane Craig with that is like he he has debated 
people. He's made exceptions to that rule. Like, you know, not debating um, no one that doesn't at least have a PhD. He's done that at least twice. Yeah, I think with Christopher Three. Hitchens and... um, Because uh, unless... Did Christopher Hitchens have any degrees? I know he was a journalist. I'm not sure. I, I think... I know he was qualified. I mean, with Matt Dillahunty, I mean... Not many people outside of people that watch the atheist experience and stuff know know much about him. Yeah. Um. Now, I the 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 main reason why I think he would go out the make special cases, which I think is perfectly fine, is because someone like Christopher Hitchens, he's a big like he he's way above uh Del Haunty's level and so on. And yeah. I, I think he would be a worthy debater. Uh, I don't necessarily think he's outside of the field of religious debates and so on because of course he's written his books uh, god's not great and so on well i mean hitchens was a master of rhetoric if anything you know if anything that's the one thing no one could take away from him he knew how to talk yeah, yeah. that was a big thing you know, that, that was a big thing that got him over it wasn't really much of his like no one really watched christopher hitchens debates looking for an argument of his they looked for him because he had a specific charm to him yeah, and um, he he tend to be more conservative, I think, which is you know I I tend to be, I guess I, even though I I am involved in politics a lot, but I, I don't bring up my political views on my channel specifically. But I, I will say I'm, I'm more towards the right, and um, I mean yeah, for me it depends um on the subject. Like you know, there's yeah. some positions I lean more conservative with, but there's some I lean more liberal with. Um. Um, you know, yeah. so I don't believe you. it's a good thing to have like your, uh, your position set out, like, you know, where if you're right, you know, we know that you're going to vote this way or you're going to do this way. I believe it's always good to keep them sort of guessing. Yeah. And po politics, I, I, I somehow agree that religion should not be involved in politics. Oh, it, same here. It, especially if it's not true, but, um, if 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 Christianity is true, which I do think it is too, but we would disagree on that. I, I think it should be involved. But I I, I mean, I, I think I, it's impossible. Like you know, it's impossible to get religion completely out of politics unless you get one of the other. Yeah, because like, you know, you know, because people are always going to have beliefs, and your beliefs are going to somewhat affect you. Yeah, definitely. And uh, every politician has their all own ideologies, just which is the correct ideology to take and so on. Yeah. Although I'm typically not like these anti-theists that seem to equate, you know, their religious beliefs to their bad politics. I yeah. tend to side with, I tend to side with the fact that, you know, they have this whole idea of beliefs cause actions, which there is good psychology on that. Although I take the more, I take the opposite view where actions cause beliefs. Actions cause beliefs. Hmm. I would it's called to. projection theory. Can you go into that? Because I've actually never heard of that. Oh, well, I mean, it's like your beliefs can be are affected by the actions of, you know, your society around you. Um, you can find this, like, when you really think about it, like, you can find, um, like, conservative and liberal Christians, you find that their their religious beliefs are the same. They believe Jesus. They believe that he rises on the dead. But you have they have a world of difference simply because of their actions. They they project um, they project what um, their expectations and when by people acting next to them, they you know they get that back and that shapes their beliefs. Yeah, um Yeah, that that's that seems to me the, the I'm I may be confusing this, but that, that just seems like the genetic fallacy of saying because of the system. Well no, it doesn't mean it's not saying it's right or wrong. Yeah, I, I, I get that. Just I I think ultimately I think you think before you do, which is a Yeah, lot. I mean I get I mean there's a big discussion one could have in the realm of psychology on this yeah. about which comes first. Boy. I mean, it depends, really. But I mean, I'm not saying they're wrong. You would still have some control over it. It would just like be, you know, it'd be inversed one way. 
where you know where you're it'd be about where you're influenced from not by what you're controlled by yeah and i would agree that obviously the society you live in can influence you but if you do accept the moral argument then it's true everywhere that there are these objective standards that everyone oh, yeah. so ultimately i guess everywhere there is going to be this objective sense of morality so yeah uh, that, that'd I mean, be cool. oh go ahead oh yeah i mean i mean when it comes to morality i mean you know i go into bell my channel too where i talk about that um sort of stuff you know i w um i always did i found it funny actually when i first seen ip in his debate with godless um engineer because i didn't know what ip looked like I never seen, you know, a picture of him. I never knew what he looked like. So it was funny because I actually had thought originally he was your age. Yeah. Um I I, I honestly had no clue what he looked like either. And when 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 you see what he looks like, it's not what you expected, but at least from my perspective. I was just you know, I didn't know he was married and had children. I had no idea about that. I thought he was around your age. Um, I, I, I thought he was older, but, um, I, because yeah. he, he, he's been on since like, um, geez, probably 2010 or something like that. Yeah. I recently, I got into his videos probably about maybe two years ago, maybe like a year, maybe a year or two ago. Very good. Very smart guy. Give him that. Oh yeah. Yeah. He definitely uh, studies the studies, I guess. But, um, me and him actually went back and I, I actually messaged him on, on messengers sometimes and some we've gone back and forth on certain issues. Yeah, um well he he would um obviously we're both Christians and you're deist, which is essentially fine. Mm -hmm. It's also well, I mean, yeah. new, new atheism or anti theism, which are very irrational views. I, I, I hold to that proposition. Oh yeah. Um I completely agree with you guys about the uh, anti theists. They're they're complete um, they're just jerks in general online. That's why yeah. I got into that. That's why I got into the whole. Um, that's why I got into the uh, Max's group. Hey, sorry for interrupting you, but don't let the cat out. Of it's hurt. All right. Yeah, but that's why I got into the group because, um, because of the whole problem with the anti-theist movement. Well, I, I think it, I, I think it has died out somewhat, at least not on the internet, but po politically speaking. When, when, when they started their uh, all, all their lectures and so on, I, because Dawkins, I'm pretty sure he he had some event planned out and n not enough people showed up. Yeah, I mean, well, their reason rallies are you know lose steam, yeah. and um, you know I find point like they're having a hard time just organizing meetings and like. Organ I mean, I get that organizing a meeting isn't easy, but I mean, you've had, but people are just having a lack of interest in showing up to them. Yeah, it seems like all the memes that were that they were spreading out in their propaganda was ha has died out in the realm of daily conversation, but has stayed concerning the YouTube um the the YouTube channels and so on, like Holy Kool Aid, Cosmic Skeptic, and so on. Even I like Cosmic Skeptic. They yeah, I do too. Like God, Cosmic is a pretty cool dude. I like him. Well, I, I think it's his British accent. Oh well, yeah, of course. Um, um, yeah. I actually had done a video on my channel, you know, going after another YouTuber um, named Essence of Thoughts. Uh, I I have um, uh, his channel enough to make a, a judgment. Uh, I mean, he the the video I did was on his. Um, he it was like debunking William Lane Craig's Kalam cosmological argument. And he brought up something like the Occam's cosmological argument, where he basically said that you have to assume God exists in order to make the argument. Oh, well, that, that sounds like the big question fallacy they accuse it of, because your first premise states that everything, everything that begins to exist has a cause. And the universe began to exist. Therefore the universe has, has a cause. They, they, they question that as being question begging, but it, it, it's saying it's that not, if, yeah, if everything that begins to exist has a cause, then it necessarily it follows. Doesn't even point to God. 
necessarily. Um, because I, like William Lake Craig said, you know, it could be abstract objects. Well, he, he said that though the something that would be timeless, spaceless, immaterial, and so on could be an abstract object. But ab abstract objects don't cause anything. Like the number seven doesn't necessarily do anything. And that would be... Well, yeah, I know. I get that. I'm just saying, like, you know, he he put that out there as an option. So, you know, it's not just God that falls into that category. Yeah, I, I've done an article on um, dealing with the top ten objections. And why would the cause have to be personal? And if it is personal, then obviously it's more than just an abstract object. And yeah. um, his, his main argument would be for that, that if this were not a personal cause then the effect of the cause would be eternal if you think about it. Mm -hmm. Unless you make a choice where you can go from a state of nothingness to nothingness as well. Yeah. I mean, I'm not completely sold on the person person argument, but they are interesting. Well, I, do you accept the fine-tuning argument? Oh, yeah. I, I, I definitely accept that. Then the expansion rate right after the Big Bang is fine tuned, so that would seem to hint at intelligence if you hold to some. Oh yeah, I don't. You know, I of course believe God's intelligent. Any being that has to create, you know, that creates the universe has to have some level of intelligence. Yeah, and um, I, I guess if you add the fine tuning argument to itself with the Kalam, then also you establish it's more than just a, a abstract object, but at the same time. Since this cause plan this fine tuning out, then that would seem at it being personal since it wants us to be here for some reason. Yeah. It wants humans to be here, you know. I take more of a like an agnostic stance on it. I take you know, where I don't exactly know what God does, particularly. I just definitely do believe that the argument, I believe, like the fine, I believe the fine tuning and the I accept fully the fine tuning argument and the. Um, trying to think there was another oh yeah and the it was one matt slick did i disagree with him theologically yeah. but the, the transcendental um, yeah. argument yeah except um, that he actually did a, he actually did a very good job on that argument yeah the, there is i he probably revised it but there was a question begging fallacy i think in it or at least wrongly accused of because in well one, yeah they did yeah, either God exists or God does not exist. But then his final conclusion is God. Therefore, God exists, and I, I yeah, and that does become question begging. But I think he probably revised that in some way. Well, yeah, I mean, um, I looked at the the one that I've seen that I think is like where he tries to say, you know, logical absolutes exist, and these logical absolutes, you know, exist. You know, um, they can't exist in human minds. Um, because, you know, where would you find them in the material universe? Therefore, they have to exist in a transcendent mind. Like, something like that. Yeah, um, they're, they're conceptual. You, you, you typically only find the laws of logic. You, you, you think about them. They, it's not like Platonism where they're out there just like numbers and object yeah. morality itself. But I, I also I, do take, you know, I also think about, you know, some of Johann Roth's arguments, too, that he brings up about quantum physics. Very interesting stuff. Yeah, that, that's going to something I do not know enough about. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. I mean, I told, you know, I was actually on our the group. I actually said um, Essence of Thoughts really got into, you know, science. And I said, you know, once you get into, like, you know, cosmology and you get into astrophysics, once you get into that area, you know, I, I clock out. That's that's over my head. I'm more of a philosophy and history guy. Oh yeah, I, th those are. I, I'm I'm much better with history and philosophy than, like I do like science and I have studied a lot of it. Obviously for the Kalam, I have like I I've, I've studied uh, the oscillating models and how they don't work concerning our gravity yeah. and so on. Um, I don't know. Like my only problem with the Kalam in particular is that it it goes on the a theory of time. Yeah, I would probably agree with that view. I don't think um, that's my, happened. you know, that's my only problem with like if the A theory of time was like, you know, was right, then yeah, the argument would go completely for. But you know, with all the the models and stuff that we have now, it's kind of hard to hang on to the A theory. Now, what may, maybe you can spec or at least put B theory in more of a layman's term because I've only taken a look at 
I, I, I understand a theory of time. Things begin to exist and so on. Well, I mean, would, like, well, the thing is with um, a theory of time is like, would be objective. There would be like an objective point. Well, with B theory of time, it's more subjective, like relative. Things don't really come, like things don't really like begin to exist. They really just come into being at a certain time, based on like rel re our relative sense. Hmm, that's interesting. Um, you could I, say I, like I um, philosophers are actually kind of divided on it. Well, I, I know Craig wrote an entire book on it. I plan on reading it because I would probably hold more to A theory of time. Because B theory of time um, seems to say that um, we, we are going through stages of time and the future is as real as the past and the present. And that would be something because it would seem like the universe would have to be eternal on that view. And I think we have good science. Not necessarily, actually. Um, um, they actually did. I can't remember who wrote it, but they actually said you could, if you worked at it like you could make the argument that the um like i got into johan Roth with this because i was telling him about does the b theory of time you know ne necessitate an eternal universe he said no he said there could um he calls it like you know you could say that there is like a beginning um in the sense like i'm trying how he worded it but he said like you know you could say that there's like a beginning point in a certain sense it doesn't necessarily lead you to an eternal universe. And there has been some philosophic, like there are philosophical arguments that say that even on a B theory of time, that, you know, there would still have to be a beginning. You know, Craig gives, um, you know, the reasons why, you know, on the A theory, an infinite number of events, you know, can't happen. Well, would B theory say that that can't happen? Or would you just not say that those are actual? It's a different. Well, you couldn't use Craig's for that one, but you could use. Um, I believe it's Avicenna's um, argument against it, which Avicenna. I can't. I don't, I'm probably butchering his name, but he goes into an argument where, where Avicenna um, grants that it. You know, there can be an infinite, but they can only be achieved under certain conditions. Um. And under a B theory of time, it would meet the conditions where it would it be it would meet the conditions where it could not be an infinite. Well, see, the, the thing is, if you hold that the future has not happened, then on the second philosophical argument, then it would seem like that if there were an infinite number of past events and then how would we have arrived today? I, I'm sure you're familiar with that argument as well. Oh yeah. I'm just saying, you know, I'm just throwing that out there, you know, cause a lot of people, you know, especially Carol goes into that, like, you know, how apparently, you know, if you accept the B theory of time, apparently, you know, time doesn't have a, you know, it's eternal, which isn't necessarily true. You could still have a beginning. You would just have to define beginning a little bit differently. Well, if the universe has an age, then it would seem like a theory of time works best if it did begin to exist. In a sense. Yeah. Well, they it would go like this: it wouldn't be really begin to exist, but it would like come into being. Um, like I believe Carol described it: if there'd be a time before a time, or before time. Well, I would agree that there wasn't time before time. If, but I I also don't agree that therefore. The, the non sequitur they give that something can come from nothing because uh, uh, I, I think yeah would, yeah because yeah, if you hold to a timeless being and obviously there was no time before time started itself there's an eternal yeah, I mean, thing that created and so yeah. whether it's personal or not but I, yeah I go I don't know if you've seen my little debate where I well not really debate more of a discussion with Johan Ross where we discuss him from philosophy too I have not. Um, yeah, it was pretty good. He taught we talked about idealism and eliminated materialism. Um, it was actually pretty good. I think um, we had a pretty good discussion ourselves. Um, and I was going to say to get back to the IP situation, I think you know IP is pretty um, pretty good with this. I I'm, I was thinking that um, judging from how I seen in his last debate. 
you know, I know IP was going to, is going to come prepared and he was going to really pay some, I didn't know how, you know, he would do against Dillahunty because Dillahunty is pretty good with, um, appealing to more that, um, every day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dillahunty is not really known for like science or stuff like that. He's more known for being like a great rhetoric person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and he'll probably admit that you um that he's not educated in these fields, so he won't talk about what they're. And then then he goes on in later episodes to talk about how your science is wrong, and he can show it through scientific studies. And he, he, he well, you know, he's not stupid. No, he's not. I, I I think he's a little from from what I I've caught. Um, and it, at at least he doesn't realize he contradicts himself or he's dishonest, but. I don't know what you're uh, I think he has just way too much confidence in himself. Yeah. That's my only beef with him. Yeah. That's with a lot of them, actually. Like, they all... I remember I was, when I was doing my Essence of Thought video, you know, he... The guy gets really angry and says, the Kalam is dead. It has been dead for centuries. There are hundreds, like... There's, like, hundreds of videos debunking it on YouTube. And I'm like, well, I guess the round earth has been disproved because it's been debated for centuries, and... Yeah, and and there's hundreds of YouTube videos debunking it. Yeah, I said, dude. you know, the existence of multiple responses does not equal a debunking. Yeah, because everything has basically almost been, and science itself. Well, a new phrase that um, Lawrence Krauss and everyone will say is science is always changing, but that that seems going by that logic itself. It seems like. Uh, nothing is disputed in science, which is ultimately true in many cases, I think. But I think the laws of thermodynamics, I think we understand somewhat well. Yeah, I mean, I was, when I was getting working on this project with, for, for the Red Pill Religion Project, where we're going to probably be doing a science net um, video. And I actually went through it and Steven Weinberg, I don't know if you've heard of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big anti you know, and he said, you know, he said, you know, science has no authority figures or no prophets. Yeah, Lawrence Krauss. And I laughed. Him too. I laughed. But science is filled with politics and <laughs> and big muscle men. Like, you know, if you don't, like, you can't do science without some politics in it. And there's some authority figures necessarily from that. Yeah, Frank Turk cited a study. I, I don't have it on top of my head, but basically, thirty one percent of scientists fudge their stats for political is for political um, issues and so on, so that they can get funding from politics. Yeah, so I mean, I mean, I want to be able. You to can't. Really... Help, but... Oh, I remember that whole study where they said. Um, I actually had put this. I actually because I make my I debunk atheists on a regular basis as you, anyone would know me knows so they tend to have that whole argument where there's more you know scientists and the you know there's more atheist scientists than the general population or something like that percentages yeah and well, and i put up you know and i made sure i did a study and you know it's an interesting fact you know from this from the study it says the atheism has nothing to do with their science because really the reason why they're atheists is not because of their science, but mainly it comes down to like how, where they were raised at and, um, you know, the kind of job that they're doing. Um, it really has nothing to do with their science. It's like, um, it's like an, uh, it's like an Uckland study. I've seen it on God science.org. Yeah. Um, so it has I, nothing to do with their science. It's just, it's more or less, you know, from their. It really it's has more nothing to do with it. It has nothing to do with their science or nothing. Oh, hi, engine. Hey, barely got here. Yeah, I I don't know what 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 uh, wrong with the link and so on. Mm -hmm. uh. So, so yeah, we were just talking about. How the you know athe there's science scientists that are atheists their atheism doesn't really um make them 
the science doesn't make them atheists. It's more of their background that makes them atheists. Well, they have no reasons for atheism in the first place by their so, own admission. It's just so, ba so basically, Inspiring Philosophy debated that Joel Steen of atheism, and what happened? Nah. Yeah, I, Matt, Matt did a lot better than a godless engineer in the previous. Well, that's not saying much. No, it's not saying much at all. Yeah, but you, you have to at least give him some credit there. He he is a good debater with um with how he 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 seems to overemphasize things, and he he's a powerful speaker in some of the debates I've seen. But overall, when you critically look at his arguments, they're not good arguments. And he's an uh, he's an atheist until back into a corner, then he's an agnostic. Yeah, you said that earlier. Mm -hmm. Discord or something like that. Um, he's letting. He's less aggressive than some of the other atheists. Oh yeah, like uh, he's uh, um, like uh, compared to he's not like quite up there with like Aaron Raw or something. But no, his, his, uh, his Aaron Raw used to be his lap dog, and that uh, yeah, yeah, and that other guy Seth Andrews, uh, Mister Christianity made me taught like an idiot. Now I'm on the side of reason. Hmm. Well, he he's, he's, he's the thinking. thinking. Yeah, like uh, the. Mr. Rogers of atheism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, I, I'm hearing my voice in the background of someone's mic, so. Let's see. <clears throat> but, um, let's see here. Oh, so let's talk about secular humanism and how it has, how there are studies on it. It's called Soviet Russia, I think, or at least in Mao and so on. I think they were practicing communism which was based off of Karl Marx's view and his one book on it and he was a secular Jew but typically was an atheist concerning the existence of God and the, I, I oh, think yeah. he went to some view of secular humanism um, secular humanism is basically to me speciesism and denial um, because there are oh, arguments God. there are a whole like you know with Sam Harris it's like they they the whole like um on their site they said it's a straw man where they said we can be good without God. I don't like I have a fundamentalist sister and she knows I'm not a Christian and even she doesn't say I'm I can't be a good person. So I think they're just dealing with a straw man. Or, you oh, yeah. know, no one argues that no one argues that atheists don't know right and wrong. Oh no, no. All right, they just have they just have no basis on which to play moralizing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, ontologically speaking, there is no grounding on. Well, atheism is just a lack of belief in the first place. But of course, they would argue from secular humanism. It's just uh, um whatever's beneficial to our species that's moral. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, or, you I, know, what, or like Sam Harris says, you know, whatever, you know, produces like the most for flir um, human flourishing. Hello there, Abana Snowman. Hmm. But yeah, I I mean, from what I have seen from Matt Dillahunty, because I have watched the atheist experience. I mean, I've seen some of his videos and, you know, he's just known for being like um, a master of rhetoric. That's whole his whole always been his whole stick. He's never really been known for his arguments. He's sort of like Hitchens in a way. No, but then he's not really a historian, a scientist, or a scholar of any kind. He just runs an. Oh well, yeah. Well, I mean, in fairness to him, he's never, he's never pushed himself as a scholar. Well, he he all he does really is host a TV show and so on. Well, yeah. So I mean, but I mean, it's not like he's ever called himself like a scholar or an authority on certain matters. You gotta well, give him that. He, he sure acts like it when he debates people. Oh yeah, when he debates people. I mean, there's also that matter like you know you have to show off. Like like when him and his uh and his cronies just make fun of stupid Christians that call on a show all the time and try to s pretend that reflects on uh, religion in general. Yeah. I believe yeah. Ray Comfort actually called them one time. Yeah, um, yeah, I've I've listened to the whole interview and uh, that was just uh Yeah. Uh, Rick Comfort, 
Um, it's not really a good representation of Christianity. Worse than that. Well, I, I, I like how he um, advocates for the spread of the gospel and so on, but when, when he defends presuppositionalism and young earth creationism, it's it's nothing impressive. His, heart, his heart's in the right place, but his brain is not. Yeah, yeah. It's um ignoring... It's like taking First Peter three fifteen, but just doing gentleness and respect and sort yeah, of can't say, the, so. can't say the same for a Ken Ham. I think he's in it for money, basically. That's well, it. Yeah, he got he got chased out of Australia, and now he's there's a millions of suckers over there in the Midwest. <clears throat> can anybody hear me? Yeah, yeah we can hear. Okay. you. All right, cool. I was messing around with my thing, so just trying to figure it out. Trying to get the figure it out between the headphones and. The, you don't sound much like a snowman. I know, but I'm, I'm like Frosty. It was the magic hat that brought me to life. You know the t how the tune goes. So Did you, you actually just... see the debate between? Did um, you see the debate between our inspiring philosophy and Matt Dillahoney? Yeah, I caught the second half of it, and for my personal opinion, I believe inspiring philosophy conducted himself well. It's just the issue that. He's uh, it's like he's debating against a wall. I'd almost say, and Matt had some good objections, but well, see, now he was focusing on the topic in general: is religion a positive thing? And he was he was focusing on that, and I think Matt was trying to go off into rabbit trails and so on. That's what we discussed before. Matt was mm -hmm. basically going by his opinions while IP had sources prepared. Yeah. I know. From, what I, from what I gather, anyway. Yeah, that's from what I saw, from what I've read, from what I've heard. IP had his stuff together. He's more than prepared for this. Matt just kind of trailed off, and like you guys are saying, just let him on a wild goose chase almost. <laughs> and it was mm -hmm. annoying. Yeah, he and I, IP, I he, he's a good debater. He I didn't don't think follow IP took a lot of questions and so on. I don't think Matt Dillahunty took him seriously. No, and he... Anybody seriously. Yeah, he, he he paints everyone with the same brush as being irrational. And he, he I think he literally made this on the show that he goes in uh, presupposing that he's going to win the debate and he always... He, he, he doesn't seem open-minded in debates and so on. Well, I mean, yeah. you know... I mean, well, I remember watching his and he... Oh, he like from what I heard he, him say, he's, he said he goes into the debates, you know, trying to play like the lawyer card. And his job is he tries to get the case thrown out for a lack of evidence. Yeah. And then he tries to affirm his position is correct, which is one of the fallacies we point out at the beginning of the video when inspiring philosophy was on. He he's willing to change his mind, but we know that's not the case. He's uh, a feminist. Uh, that, I, I, that's I already gone. I, I don't don't think think awesome, but of course. Of <laughs> course. So I think changing his mind is out of the question there. Oh, oh that's definitely know. the case with Aaron Raw. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. But there is there is no God because there's no evidence, and nothing counts as evidence because there is no God. Mm -hmm. Circular. Well, what what he does is he takes faith itself and then like sources and answers in Genesis and then paints faith as overall blind. Well, and doesn't uh, refer to scripture like, at all and so on. I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, it's classic within that community of people. They tend to see religion as just so black and white. You know, they never take the time to ask anybody. And we all know this. They never take the time to ask anybody. They never take the time to themselves to try and understand what it is being from the inside. They don't try to view it from a theological perspective or even study the theology you know i i have a lot to learn but i'm much deeper into that than a lot of them and a lot of my friends who are atheists i will let when they talk to me not saying i'm the all knowledgeable source of everything but i try to give them a better perspective i just wish that that community would try to get the perspective not only from a majority of the Christians, but from, you know, the deeper stuff within that we're trying to talk about, we're trying to portray to people. They, the way, like, a, Go ahead. Uh, the way Matt tells it, like, uh, he was going to become a minister or something like that, and then uh, he changed his mind, like, uh, well, I decided one day, 
I cared if my beliefs were actually true or not. Yeah, he 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 also stated like, like, like we don't twice in the um debate that he grew up Baptist and so on. Hmm. Well, well, he he does that every now and then. I mean, you know, he's never been afraid of going through a story. Like uh like he puts like uh, unlike um Dillahunt, Aaron Raw doesn't pussyfoot around with that lack of belief shit. He just asserts that um, I'm even though I don't really care about swearing, I just for my podcast, I try and keep it family friendly is what I tried staying before. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, afterwards, right. if we talk, he doesn't, I, he doesn't beat around the bush with that. Yeah. yeah. Like a belief stuff. Yeah. I was actually going to ask that because I was kind of swearing like a slayer. <laughs> I'd pause the video and Matt would say something stupid and start yelling at him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll, I'll start laughing like I was actually talking to him as well and ip kept rolling his eyes towards um certain <laughs> <made> about christianity <laughs> i loved ip's reactions though <laughs> it was or, classic just or, or the, huh well i didn't get that part well, it was more towards the second half of the debate i, I can't there's various instances what, what just face palming and whatnot it's, when he was there's this one part where he's taking a drink of water and it just i think he was trying to hide it but you could just see the massive eye roll slash mental face palm he's making is like no you idiot you're not getting what i'm talking about at all it's like everything's flowing <laughs> over his head it's great yeah uh and matt would do the same thing of course thinking that uh what ip is saying is nonsense even though he gave studies and matt didn't and <laughs> ip kept saying yeah that's just your opinion it's no better than the christian who says all my experience trumps all evidence and so on mm -hmm. Which is exactly, he mocks that all the time in his show, and he says faith is blind and so on. This is how religion is overall, and then he does the same exact thing. Mm -hmm. That's just the thing with atheist um, versus theist debates. It's like, the theists will come prepared typically, but the atheists just generally just don't take the debate seriously, and then bitch and complain if, because they're not liked in the debate. Yeah, well, the non the non sequitur show definitely seems biased. Oh, yeah. I think they admit. I think they admit that as well. Oh, not not uh, Kyle. He tries to be as neutral as possible. Well, he well he's literally well he he can't use a lack of belief because he he says he's an agnostic. So if he, he that that's literally the neutral that's position. Steve, no affirmative claims. Steve says he's an agnostic, but he tends to think that atheists have more convincing arguments. <laughs> well, then he won't be an agnostic then. Oh, there's there's usually there's mostly low hanging fruit they debate they have a atheist debate but uh, he has a friend who's one of the more competent ones uh, Sentinel Apologetics you've heard of him yeah uh, I, I, they they did a Hugh Ross interview which I was definitely interested in watching yeah, yeah there's um Hugh Ross is very good I like him most of the yeah. Christians they talk to though are are low hanging fruit so they talked to a flat earther who wasn't a Christian. Yeah, the, the flat earthers seem like presuppositionalists, and they oh take yeah, Psalms Aaron, Aaron and like, try thing, and read it. The thing, thing is a uh, Christian movement. It's, yeah, no, but, well, no, that's not true because the flat earth society is founded by atheists. Okay, <laughs> I I haven't looked into that, so but yep, it's you, true. Well, I I know some flat earthers will try and cite the Bible and do take that position, so that that's why I'm simply arguing from. I don't like. Well, yeah, I, I don't have. Now the, now the Hebrews did believe the world was uh, flat, but they weren't making scientific statements. They were just going along with what they and their neighbors thought at the time. Yeah, yeah I, I, just, I don't think just, the Bible says were, either or. They were just giving God credit where it was due. I think I can't remember what part of Scripture says this, but I believe there is a part of Scripture because I remember reading something about it. I it talks about the world. Too. Like they thought the world was a flat disk that um, it was surrounded by a dome with us, and outer space is uh, the sea. Yeah, that that's in Genesis one, where um, you have the waters above the waters, and when you look into the Greek, that that's not how they would have understood it, or the Hebrew. My bad, because the you mean there isn't a dome? No, unfortunately not. There, you you can go into space and so on, unless the moon landings were fake. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which, is, which is something else they argue for. Which is, 
Well, they faked the moon. Well, I mean, they did it a lot differently than what how they faked it in 2001 A Space Odyssey. Yeah, I mean, you know, if there is like, you know, people ask this question, like, you know, if there was if there was one nuts compar- conspiracy theory that you wish was true, you know, I always say the flat earther because, I mean, I think the idea of a flat earth is, pr- is pretty hilarious. Oh, that, that would be pretty funny to actually figure out the earth is flat. <laughs> right. I mean, obviously, obviously, you would have to throw the scientific method out the door if, if that were. It would be worth it just to see how funny that would turn out. Yeah. Um, hey. God, I was watching. There's a vi- well, I wasn't watching it. There's a video suggested to me for some reason. It was uh, about how it is unbiblical to believe that the Earth is round or something like that. And I'm like, why? Why? Yeah. Is this oh, I, I, John Lennox answers this in um his one book, Seven Days That Divide the World, and he he argues that there are psalms and they're not to be taken as a literal interpretation of how the Earth was made. But he he then said for the sake of argument, let's assume this is what it says and. He argued that it, it, that would be arguing from the laws of physics and that the Earth is stationary, meaning it's put in place with the cycle along the solar system and so on. But uh, overall, Psalms are not literalistic like the Book of Revelation and so on. Right. Yeah. But I just. The Book of Revelation is probably the best book. Re- in my, in my opinion. Yeah, I don't, that's my favorite book. Oh, what do um, you mean? Oh, go ahead. Whoever was going to talk. Yeah, that was me. Sorry. <laughs> I just I think there's so much, so many more things to talk about besides is the Earth flat around. It's like when people ask for my personal opinion, I tell them I just it, I don't really worry about it. Whether it's round, if it's round, it's round. I believe it's round, but it's not going to worry me. What if it turns out to be flat? I'm like, whatever. I live on it. I I am content. Not a big deal. And I think people need to be getting in more important subjects instead of well the earth's flat or the earth's flat it's, actually no. actually you know it's wrong all you gotta do is a uh, online chat with somebody in uh on the other side of the world and it's nighttime over there daytime over here and vice versa yeah well yeah. you know the earth is you know the earth is flat and it's traveling on the back of a giant turtle <laughs> <laughs> martyrin <laughs> no 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 it's on the back of an atlas oh god yeah even though the Bible does say that the earth is hanged on upon nothing. And it can't be moved or whatever. Um, yeah, that, that's in the book of Job, which I, I want to argue that that's saying gravity. I would, I would just say that's God trying to demonstrate to Job. Oh yeah. oh, yeah, I got a secret to tell you. Leviathan and Behemoth were not dinosaurs. Yeah, they I, I, I used to. They be. just weren't. Well, that um, throws out my day. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what's your response to those who brag that a, a Scandinavian countries are sh- freed from the shackles of religion and are doing Whoa. better than anybody else on earth? Stephen Crowder. I point out that Austria. First I point one. out that Austria and Switzerland are religious, and they have even lower crime rates than both of them, than all of them. Yeah, um, and when you look at their entire political system. Like their free speech is a crime, and many of them. Uh, Stephen Crowder goes into uh, he he has a lot of podcasts on this, and it, Europe is becoming secular, but they're also very doing bad. The the euro, I I haven't been keeping up with this, but last time I checked, the euro was their main currency, and that that has left Greece in debt and so on. Many other countries, it seems like. So you could you could just argue from their logic, secularism has led to this bad ec- economy and so on. Well, you can just take a look at Sweden. I mean, you know, if, if 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 you're into modern politics and how things are going, that one mention will sum it all up. You take a look at Sweden, you look at the migrant crisis, you look at the rape epidemic, you look at all the crap that's going on there, the death of their culture, and then, you know, you sit there and tell me how good secularism is doing with their all-feminist government and their hyper immigration crisis that oh we're just going to welcome them with open arms and you know oh yeah and there's less crime in those countries are so peaceful i'm like uh-huh. yeah, yeah but there's still crime yeah that, well, argue, your, that your objection only has merit if there have no crime at all well here's the question is hate speech well does hate speech as a crime does that actually exist and of course i was on one of Stephen crowder's changed my mind videos 
And ba basically that says if you offend someone, you can get fined for it, which is basically social justice warrior. That, that's totally social justice warrior. Yeah. 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 Which yeah. is just. Oh. You get fined for cursing or whatever. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 but many of these countries don't have that as, or have that as well. So it's just like, oh, you, you atheists who offend us by talking about um, your, your propaganda and so on. I guess you won't have that. If you want to go live there, then you can't. Speaking out against religion, apparently, and they'll um, scream and cry that atheism had nothing to do with communism. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, oh, um, I, oh, I, just so, oh, just so everyone knows, you know, me, Albano, and Engine, we're all Max cronies. Uh yeah, of course. According to Emperor Edge Lord, we're his cronies. Yeah. Yep. Even though, I'm even still waiting we, on the page Even though we disagree with him on a lot of things, we're still his cronies. Emperor Edge, yeah, and, we're still, yeah, and we're yeah, all still waiting. Yeah, Emperor, the, Emperor Atheist, this, oh, em, yeah, you know, fool, Aaron Ra's own crony. <laughs> yeah, and we're you know we're all waiting you know for our paychecks. So you know we're not pretty we're not well paid cronies. I I've been on his channel a couple of times. Of course, actually, I was on with uh when they they, they were doing their part three of critiquing dark matter. 25, 25. But um, what I was what I wanted to say before is, if you define atheism as a lack of belief and claim we're all atheists, then literally every crime ever done has been committed by an atheist. So atheism has been responsible for every crime ever done in all of history. <laughs> <laughs> and I could just hear the incessant anime fanboys coming in, and we're like, "Well, actually, <laughs> I <could> just hear <laughs> it." Like, yeah. <laughs> oh boy! Uh, I mean, I personally like. And um, and I always I, thought about debating. I always thought about if I was going to probably debate anyone, it'd probably be like someone like Rationality Rules or something. Oh my goodness! AK, I could, AK, I could, I could probably bury him on any AK, philosophy. AK, rationalizing atheism. Yeah. Um, I I, I watch this. If, if, uh, if atheism is just like a belief, then theism is like a belief that there's no higher power. Yeah. Well, you, you don't have to go that far. Just if it's your own personal pain, psychological state has no bearing on objective reality, so you have no place in these philosophical conversations concerning metaphysics and ontology. But um, anyway, what were you gonna say? Who you like? <laughs> oh no, I I was listening to I. I we, we, we talked about the clone before you two came on, and we, we, we have our differences, I guess, on a theories of time. But concerning rationality, uh, apparently debunking video, I'm sure uh, we could all agree that if you saw that video. It was oh, yeah, yeah, he tries Trump. to debunk everything that doesn't fall in line with materialism. <laughs> well, yeah. 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 Or Sam Harris. Oh, he's not allowed to question Harris. That's thought crime. Exactly. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Especially where you write a book, free will doesn't exist, but at the he, same he time, tried he, a he tried a series debunking Jordan Pierce. I'm like, when are you going to debunk Harris? He's like, like uh, looked at me like a deer in a headlights reaction. He's like, what? Yeah, just <laughs> no, yeah, no. Uh, oh, good. If anyone's a crony, it's him. If anyone's a crony, it's him to Sam Harris. Yeah, if right. anyone's holding to doctrines of people that you're not willing to challenge. And Dusty's a crony to Hitchens. Actually, a lot of them are. Well, yeah, they, they, they're all. Most of them are a bunch of hypocrites, I think. Like, no, like, uh, no new atheist gets a uh, written more than Hitchens. I, I sort of like Hitchens, even though obviously I disagreed with him on all. Yeah, he was, a, he was just about one of the very few who was a worthy opponent. I like his brother, Peter. <laughs> I like Peter was, a lot. Oh, I still like his brother. Debate. Oh yeah, cosmic skeptic uh, trademark tried to debunk uh, uh, Peter. Yeah, of course his sickle um, in, in his an eight minute video. His wow. sycophantic minions just went along with it. <laughs> you know, I would respect, and some some of these YouTube channels do do podcasts like this, but they they do eight minute videos apparently debunking a conversation that has been going on for th millennia, basically concerning the Kalam, God's existence, and so on. It's just like at least have a podcast where you have people on and you discuss other opinions. They debunk th thousands of years of uh, philosophy and history from the comfort of their own bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> it's the way of the future where you don't have to put any of the major effort into the discussing ideas. Oh, and haven't you history. heard a growing number of uh, historians and scholars are accepting that Jesus never existed? 
I'm like, you've been they've been saying this for 20 years, and you can still <laughs> count them on one hand. And then they all then they only cite uh, Richard uh, Carrier. And oh my God, the Ken Ham of Yeah. <laughs> Actually, you know, I mean, he's not even a Bible you know, scholar. Been, he's a historian with an anti-Christian bias. Who, like, his bias can't not be more in your face. He, yeah. wants, he wants. He wants to be. I a, read Tim he Hendricks. To, he wants to be a star, and he needs money. <laughs> of course, he needs money. He can't get a job anywhere, so that's how he. He, you know, he he keeps. You know, when, whenever you like, one he got into an interview with some guy, and all he really did throughout the entire interview is kept, you know, saying, you know, bringing up his books. <laughs> yeah, like if you don't agree with me, that means you haven't read my book. Says every oh, everybody. Boy. Just like, oh, and then when you check his sources, they don't end up being credible. Well, no. And how, how he reads the Bible, too. And he takes he takes one verse and reads it as like it's a myth or legend and so on. And there's one piece of bad history he hasn't propagated at one stage or another, except the Nazareth didn't exist crap, which is too stupid even for him. Well, it's like they read the Bible. A lot of atheists read it in the same respect as fundamentalist Christians. They Absolutely. read it with a very Western. Uh, the best I love what inspiring philosophy said. You know, they it's like they put on a pair of Western worldview goggles and only view it from that lens. They're just as much as literalists well, as the Christian literalists are. Well, you hate well, that. Well, your infallible word of God should be understood by everybody. I mean, you know, it, all it takes is one look to the East and the early church fathers. You know, like, uh, mythicism is not, like, uh, why is Carrier not respected in academic circles, but only by uneducated anti-Christian fanatics on the internet? <laughs> yeah. 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 And a guy like Jerry Coyne is a, another guy that always supports oh, him always and everything. And Jerry Coyne is, well, he's a well. Jerry Coyne's a good like biologist. History, no, he's freaking horrible. Same with Aaron Raw. Like uh, he's good at the science, but when it comes to uh, history, philosophy, and uh, uh, theology, <laughs> guy's a freaking retard. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's kind of like a clown too, if you ask me. But that's just my opinion. Well, I, I don't think it's a, an opinion. I think it's an object of reality. Considering, <laughs> considering what he actually yeah, has studied. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, we're apparently also obsessed with Aaron Raw. Well, well, one of Emperor Edgelord's uh, fangirls said it. Yeah, like, well, I'm, like, I'm like how you're obsessed with William Lynn Craig and Ken Ham and them. <laughs> yeah, well, see, well, concerning William Lynn Craig, Matt Dillahunty, Thunderfoot, and all of them, they don't when they when they do respond to him it's usually a straw man but i, I never see any of these m the most popular youtube atheists respond to actual arguments deductive syllogisms cuz most of them don't know how to respond to it cuz they don't actually know what logic is jim <laughs> who would you say what i find funny is like i actually go into it and here's what's funny in my video what i pointed out with them is like cuz um um, essence of thoughts, you know, he brings up these objections, and I point out Craig dealt with these objections six <laughs> years ago. Essence you, of have no re you have no, re you have no reason to have not known about these object, um, how your objections are bad. Essence yes, actually so watch presentation or lecture or read a book for once. <laughs> yeah. no, he, he prefers atheist propaganda. Essence of so. Well, they're just in this big echo chamber, you know. I, I remember yeah. watching a thing from Jordan Peterson where he's talking about how very smart people and very rational people tend to fall in love with their own rationality. And that's happened en masse with a lot of this skeptic community. They've fallen so deeply in love with their rationality and their supposed ability to reason that they, you know, they continue in this arrogance quote unquote knowing they're more intelligent than everybody else oh, and thinking oh. that their questions are unique I'm like nobody's ever asked this before well, I'm <laughs> the first person to ask it like whatever this stuff has been dealt with over thousands of years like you were what? saying you're nothing special oh, what skeptics what skeptics I, I would ask yeah. th this is a challenge to most atheist laymen um, name me one church <laughs> father and I'll, I would be like okay you did a little research Oh, um, yeah. I know a couple myself. What's your response to those who think um, 
who buy into that conspiracy theory that uh, that Yahweh, or that's not how you pronounce it, but uh, well, the polytheism of the Old Testament. Yeah, that that Yahweh was a thunder god or volcano god, or war god, or whatever. I I don't know about that, but if you're if you're talking about um the polytheism psalms literally yeah. has an entire passage on where it says there are no gods except yahweh and there's yeah, passages they're, in Isaiah. They're, like, they're monolateralists like they um they yeah. knew there was only one god worthy of worship but they also went after other gods but like even the bible tells us and like does it doesn't it seem odd that whenever the bible turns out to be right about something they try to put a spin on it and try to make it an issue yeah, <laughs> yeah. but what's oh, funny is like um, this thing i mean not many people know about is like when uh, when the Israelites went to war with another tribe, they basically seen it like if they won, that meant God was um, you know on their side and that they had defeated the other people. So when they took over, they you know they assumed that you know that the um, that God had you know won the battle for them. Yeah. Oh well, um, yeah. Remind me to send you a link to that video where Inspiring Philosophy tackles on that conspiracy theory. Yeah. Now, of course. <laughs> the old Testament was very clear that they got into idolatry of polytheism and so on. And I, I think you see that with King Solomon. Obviously, he had like 700 temples to pagan gods and so on. But the, the Bible is very clear that there is one God. And the Trinity is not in the Old Testament yet because they had this polytheistic problem. And if they're introduced to the concept that God is one being but in three persons, or one, yeah, one being in three persons. In the well, actually, actually, inspiring philosophy talked about that there was a trinity of sorts in the old. Well, Testament. in Genesis, yeah, one yeah, yeah, there's the oh, Lord, overall uh, that there's the Lord, the angel of the Lord, and the voice of the Lord. Sure, I, I, I don't think that. I, I think they had to understand that God is one first, and then they would have understood the trinity in the New Testament, which is very clear, obviously. But some Jewish people or some Jewish rabbis would argue that the Old Testament does not. If you get, if you get a fedora tipper yelling a Bronze Age myth or Bronze Age go sheep herders or a sky daddy, just block them. Those well, guys don't see the It's not even wrong. It's, it's, it, they're completely wrong because, for one, the Bible wasn't written by Bronze Age sheep herder. It was written by <laughs> priests, philosophers, some um, um, very smart people wrote, wrote it down. Besides, if, how could they, how could they be illiterate if they're writing stuff down? And how uh, Aaron Ross so uh, eloquently puts it, uh, uneducated savages. <laughs> yeah. Even though, <laughs> even though you have the entire book of Proverbs, but or ignore that. <laughs> All looking like Genghis Khan. Yeah. I don't know. It's just it's um. Like they all for you know not being like up to the date on the science, but yet everything they do is not scholarly. <laughs> like that's you know, like that. everything they do, like everything, like even their definition of a lack of belief comes from a non scholarly definition of belief. Oh yeah, the proper philosophical uh, definition is the proposition that God does not exist, and you can disprove negative claims as well if you should. Well, no, um. No, I mean, like, the, the only definition of a belief is, like, it's a propositional attitude, like an opinion or, like, a, like, you know, you can't lack it, you know, because it's a mental state. Yeah. Well, yeah. Man. Well, they use the, well, they use the layman, they use the layman's version of um, a belief. So their whole position is basically non-scholarly and just, like, layman. They yeah. take it, they well, accept it for no, being easy. I, I, I will say but... this, it's it's mostly the new atheist, and there are some, obviously, people like Michael Roos, who is a excellent atheist philosopher, or at least a philosopher, I think, because he does have philosophy degree and stuff like that. And I do have a guy who comments like on my videos who is very intelligent as well, who disagrees with me. I like Michael Roos. He's nice. Hmm? Um, I also like Michael. Yeah, and he's very good. Also. Yeah, they're they're much better than Dawkins and so on because they actually know how to they know how to philosophy. Basically, yeah. The well, I mean, even Thomas Nagel is honest about it. He says, you know, Thomas Nagel's honest about it. He says, you know, I just don't want to. He's like, what? Why is it that I so not want there to be a god? 
Well, he, he realizes the correct definition. And um, concerning, I don't know what your guys' view on is concerning substance dualism, but he critiques it and says that consciousness is in in some part of all forms of matter obtain some some form of consciousness, and that's how you can get consciousness from matter when it combines all together. I'm pretty sure that's his argument for how consciousness can arise from materialism and so on. Well, he he isn't a materialist. He's a he believes like in property dualism, which okay. allows for immaterial substances. But well, it's yeah, still I you know. I mean, if you're an atheist and you don't want to be a materialist, you would hold to property dualism because yeah. essentially it would say that, you know, we are ultimately still our brain. It just allows for, um, like, you know, non-materialistic processes to come in. Yeah, and essentially they, they, they still have a problem with identity because if, if my mental states arise from brain states, then really my mental states are just brain states. So they're they're still the same thing, and you can't hold the um, mental states being their own thing concerning the law of identity. Uh, I have my own opinion on that, and you know, um, you know, Engine would know me because you know he watched my debate with um, Johan Rotz on that. I didn't watch a whole lot of it. Hmm. Yeah, uh, to be kind of funny, I was I was I would, I had to study it before I went into that because you know. I honestly was thinking I was going to get slaughtered. No, I thought you were debating you know, Burning Man until I found out it was actually a response video. Uh, well, we're not. We didn't really debate. We just more discussed. But you know, we. I mean, if you define a debate as two opposing positions going at it, then yeah. What what's your view? Do you hold the property dualism or substance dualism? Or uh, have... I'm gonna eliminate a materialist. You're a what? I'm gonna eliminate a materialist. What does that mean? Oh, basically, you know, like materialism, but I I reduce it even down further to that, where I say that mental states that we typically think of as existing, they don't really exist. Oh, so you don't think mental states exist? Certain mental states. There's obviously some that we do have. Well, what well, what kind of mental state would not exist? Um, like you know, pain, for example. I think pain is just like kind of a we were. It's like a replacement. Um, like a a philosoph, like how they say in philosophy, like a it's like a wince where we kind of just replace it with. And our thoughts is that really a real thing? That sounds very uh boo that that sounds to be like Buddhism and so on, which I would obviously disagree It's with. like a philosophical wince. Yeah. It just you know, it basically goes to replace everything like with just behavior. Yeah. Um, um I I hold to substance dualism. Anyway, what I mean, you- I think um I think property dualism is like if you're if you know if if you're an atheist and you don't want to hold to like um, substance dualism or nothing like that, you can always be like a property dualist. That's like the best thing. Yeah, that's what typically what a lot of, that's that's gained a lot. That's gaining a lot of popularity in, in philosophy now. Property dualism. Anyway, yeah. what did you get? What did you gather from the debate? Uh, I mean, I thought the debate. I mean, I didn't get to watch it really. I I heard a lot about it and. You know, um, I knew that inspiring philosophy was going to bring a lot to the table. Yeah, and the fedora tippers are always like, a, the guy I disagree with totally destroy the other guy I disagree with. <laughs> it grabs yeah. another Dorito, What's sips another Mountain Dew, and tips fedora. <laughs> Click me. By the way, <laughs> hi, Robert. Oh, hi. I'm here. Um, Robert is here. Anyway, I wanted to say that, um, yeah, I, I saw bits and pieces of the debate. I just kind of, you know, whizzed around. And I saw that... Um, Dillahunty was, you know, placing a whole bunch of focus on, you know, this one little issue in, you know, a Catholic hospital where, um, I, I forget how it was, you know, they had to, like, pay for some kind of uh, abortion type thing. Uh, and, uh, I don't know, I mean, I just felt he focused on that. Too much. <laughs> well, what I hate about this whole thing with abortion and stuff is like, you know, atheists completely make it a religious issue. Oh, yeah. And I point 
And I point out that, no, it's not a religious issue. It's a science versus philosophy issue. If you're, if you're a pro-choice, you're pro-philosophy. And, uh, because, you know, the pro-choice movement has completely abandoned science. The of sophistry, being, being a rabid uh, feminist, he, of course, justifies it. Tries to justify yeah, it. Of course. <laughs> well, he's actually a social justice warrior, and a lot of his videos where he talks about fem feminism, he gets a bunch of dislikes, you know, which I kind of perk up at that. <laughs> why, why didn't he get dislikes for his bad history? Like, a hit, my Hitler was a Christian. Well, God, there's still laugh, a large... I laugh like hell at that. Portion. Like I had, I had There's this one guy. Like uh, this one guy sent me like uh, four essays worth of quotes from Hitler and Mein Kampf. Yeah, I, sure the whole I just directed him to Tim O'Neill's talk with uh, Thomas Smith over that. Show me in the Bible where Jesus or Jesus himself commanded to kill all all Jews and so on and make this ultimate race. Well, like, Jesus was a Jew. Like, uh, Jesus Hitler Jesus. and his, his cronies tried to reinvent a new religion like uh, positive Christianity where the Jesus and the disciples were blonde hair and blue eyes and uh, they were killed by the Jews. Well, like, there, there is some tr truth to that historically. Were? However, 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 it was um, because the Nazi regime ultimately used the positive Christianity thing to as a for ground to get rid of Christianity as a whole. Didn't um, I, you look at the P Hitler? Are I swear at one point um, Hitler mentioned something about I think in Mein Kampf, and I'm not sure. Don't get me wrong. I uh, just kind of going based off what I have, what I've read in certain articles and what I've been told. Hitler deposited that Islam was a better fit for Europe or his version of Europe because it allowed for more violence yeah. and so on. He would well, rant about how he would go after the charge after the war was over. Well, yeah. Well, there's two quotations. Um, there's two quotations from Hitler on that. There's one, you know, um, I think it goes, you know, the peoples of Islam will always be more closer to us than, for example, the people of France. And then there's another one, another one where he says, you know, he says he prefers, you know, Mohammedism to Christianity oh, yeah. and, you know, it feels such, Japan. It feels such a dedicated huh? Christian. Why did he burn down churches and replace crosses with Batista? Yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not arguing that he's a Muslim or anything. I think, right. you know. His position was more kind of like the Germanic, and, and, you know. And why did he try to ally himself? Why did he ally himself with Mussolini, himself a staunch atheist, and who tried to bring back the Roman Empire? Which yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. which actually he did. Was a nihilist. Yeah, and he was a nihilist too. But um, here's the thing too: um, as soon as Hitler seized power, he began persecuting the churches. Um, there was a campaign known as the Kirchenkampf, which means church struggle, or you know struggle against the churches in, in German. And it was this huge persecution campaign that you that one can compare to the French Revolution's de-Christianization campaign. So, you know, they began, you know, taking crosses out of churches and whatnot and um, arresting clergymen. Um, that was especially true in the um, case of the Catholic Church, you know, because they were much more resistant. Um, I'm trying to look at the statistics here. I believe, oh, one third of all Catholic um, clergy face some form of um, state reprisal by the Nazi regime throughout the Third Reich years, and that's out of 42,000 Catholic clergy in both Germany and Austria. So, you know, imagine one-third of that side, facing you know, some kind of... You know, he never won huh? the popular vote, Hitler? He never no, won the no, popular he was actually vote. Appointed, the thing of it is, he was actually appointed by the um, the Reich's Chancellor. Who was that guy? Um, Hindenburg. Yeah, that's his name. He was appointed by him. And then when Hindenburg died, he combined Hitler combined the two positions of Reich's Chancellor and um, I believe it was like Vice President, and that became you know that became you know the position of um, their fewer you know the leader. That's how Hitler chief full power. Well, you know he was a anyway. Big I'm, I'm now. Getting off kind of topic with Hitler, <laughs> huh? You know, like Hitler was a big. Again, so you know, vegans are mad, are bad people. <laughs> yeah, he's very. He's I've heard that one. Times. He's very. Yeah, I, I I see no connection between uh, Christianity and Nazism because I see more. No, of a, no, not. I see more of a connection between veganism and and Nazism than I do than I see Christianity and Nazism. <laughs> well, wow, Nazism, the states your god. The fear is the god. So it's you know it's got a closer connection to that mindset with atheism too 
Yeah, I just got this fedora tipper right now. Who just uh, commented to me on the on that video like that? Uh, just like Hitler carried I mean, a, a religious people. ideology devoid of humanism when he is exterminating the Jews. He was also influenced by Nietzsche, and there's proof for that, obviously too, since he was a nihilist as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. I meant to get back on to get back on. Yeah, I can't speak. <laughs> I meant to get um to that you know asshole who on Emperor Atheist cha- um the comment section. <laughs> That you were telling me about, you know. Yeah. So you know, I'm still gonna do that. I'm just, I just been really lazy. <laughs> yeah. I'll be probably, I'll probably be watching the whole debate myself later on. I think I only got to see bits and pieces of it. It was Same here. <laughs> really a struggle when Matt tried to, in his wonderful, Logic. wondrous, grand, great opinion that's never wrong. Tried to explain to people how secular humanism is much better of a choice. Than well, the, the I point out this really. argument from ignorance before, and he he said that there's no study that says that secular humanism humanism is bad, therefore it's good, and that's literally an argument from ignorance, which he accused inspiring philosophy of as well. And that's also the uh, hip, hypocrisy of fallacy, where you try and say, "Oh, you're a hypocrite, therefore your position is wrong" as well. I don't think. Oh, you- that's uh, that's argument ad hominem. Um, it, it's uh in Latin, it's like two, two q q, and I, I'm I'm worried about I probably butchered that, but it's um I I have it up on actually I'll screen share it real quick. <laughs> oh, that's uh, what just to just to, oh yeah, just so everyone knows, like it's if I say you know argument ad hominem, you're like it's okay. Like if I say you're a jerk and here's why you're wrong. That's not ad hominem. If I said you're a jerk and you're wrong because of that, then yeah, that's ad argument ad hominem. Well, I I pulled it up here if you guys can see it. Oh, infinite regress. <laughs> Appeal to hip hop. We just proved it. Yeah. That, 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 that that's basically the main uh, Del Hunty fallacy I, I find from his atheist experience TV show. Because he, that's, that's quite an quite an experience. Uh, thinking you're an insignificant speck of dust in an uncaring universe filled with random tragedy. Well, well, well you have here's the thing: I listen so. to their song on their show. I don't know if you listen to their song on their show. Yeah, it's so depressing. You know? <laughs> well, not that one. That one's actually, depressing. There's a newer one that they have. Like it goes, "So you think there's you know a god who tells you what to?" It's like so depressing. <laughs> Uh, most of atheist stuff is depressing. Oh, you like and that? I'm a, very much a pessimistic uh, person, and even I find their stuff depressing. Same, same. Well, um, we've been going for like almost two hours, or actually, I think it's beyond two hours at this point. I mean, we we can continue to chat. I think I'm just going to stream though, because well, I I think we've exposed um the Hunty's argument concerning. Whether uh, religion is a positive view, or well, it is positive. He he admitted that at the beginning, and, and but essentially, he his main argument was that you can do with you 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 can do the same thing without religion, and um, which is an um, which he hasn't proven, yeah, and which, yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. hasn't been proven. Yeah, he, he, well, that's the thing. The thing of it is, he made this. He, that's what it was. Miscarriages. He complained that there, there was this Catholic um hospital that made um this woman pay for a miscarriage. And he was he focused on that one little issue. However, that kind of s- stuff can happen from secular hospitals too. Yeah. You know, and it does happen actually at, at higher rates. But, and I but, know from personal experience because my mother, you know, basically passed away early because of our local hospital. You know, at Pocket. You know, I don't want to get into that, but. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. My point is that my atheism didn't do nothing. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, not atheism then, but secular humanism apparently did, even though he admitted that there's no studies, apparently, even though you have the entire 20th century. But, uh, yeah. But in the land of hypothetical, yeah. everything under secular humanism would be perfect. And I would say, <laughs> watch iRobot, get to that kind of literature. <laughs> not, not that that's literature, but read stuff about robots and how that ultra rationale or, um, lead to something like that. Well, what's, you tell me it works. What's that one book by... um? A day Rand or something like that. Um, Iron Ron. Yeah. Oh, Atlas Shrugged. Um, it, it, yeah, it, that. 
Andrew Ryan. <laughs> Andrew Ryan. But um, if, it was... you know, if Iron Ron because if she be if she became a man, that'd be her name. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah. But yeah, I, I I think we have seen secular humanism take over in governments and politics, and I, and I think that has led to obviously a lot of harm. Unless you think it's okay for religious people to be tortured for if, their personal beliefs. If, if anti-theists had their way, we'd be heading into 1984 or uh, Brave New World, or yeah, we're, a mixture, thing of we're is, a mixture of both. The thing of it is, he, uh, Dill Hunty. Yeah, I can't speak. Dill Hunty's ideology is that um. You know, if it's it's hard to explain, you know, anything where, say, a secular humanist regime would go wrong, he would say, well, that that was secular humanism, just not practiced properly. <laughs> you know, kind of so much like no, no true communist fallacy. <laughs> yeah, I know Christians, you know, yeah, you have like the Inquisition, which was bad, but there's at least a moral standard, you know, that Christians can employ. You know, um, that yeah, says not to torture, huh? Yeah, but those numbers are exaggerated. They like to atheists like to anti theists like to think this is information they found out on their own, even though that's Protestant propaganda against the Catholic Church. Yeah, it, it, well, obviously, there was problems with them. Um, I'm not going to say with Catholic doctrines, but in, in the church itself, there were, well, yeah, they problems. did torture and burn people, but the numbers are exaggerated. Well, it wouldn't matter what the numbers are. I would still say that there's. Yeah, you know, it'll, I, it'll, I do consider still, myself Protestant, but I, I have no it'll problem. Still pretty, it was still pretty terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I terrible don't think that, say, no one wasn't Christian to begin with either. It goes against yeah. Christian teaching. So, you know, yeah. there goes that yeah, argument. Yeah, uh, no true Scotsman fallacy. <laughs> yeah. And then he, yeah, he's doing the same thing. Yeah. Because his, Jesus was all about burning people at the stake. You know, that's like I forget what I forget what passage it says in the New Testament to burn people on the stake. No, not to you mention, guys are more you know, on that one. Well, yeah, Harris uh, quoted that a break, take thy enemies and bring them for me, and I'll kill them with a sword. Yeah, that that's talking about the second uh, coming and so on and final yeah, judgment. Uh, so David Wood already uh, it's not command it, it's, commandment. It's from, a parable. David, yeah. David Wood already showed that. But, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was literally just going to quote that, and you brought that up. I was just like, oh. <laughs> oh we, we, we like, uh, does not all who say to me, Lord, Lord, went to heaven, ring any bells? Yeah. And then. <laughs> and he. he another he, another he, example of. Um, and he who lives by the sword will die by the sword. Yep. Yeah, but Jesus didn't, you know, kill anyone directly in, in the Gospels. <laughs> he didn't kill anyone in the Gospels. Uh, no. I think he says something to for, forgive the forgive them, Lord. They know not what they do as they were crucified. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, love, your, yeah. Love, your yeah. love your enemy, love your enemy, but yeah. kill him my name. <laughs> yeah, Lo you love know, I, I, you know, I always, you know, they must like I don't know. Maybe there's another Bible that's come out where you know where Jesus, you know, somehow just going around with a machete, just chopping up people. I don't know. I've never read that one. <laughs> Yeah, so that seems to be where all the that seems to be the one the edition that atheists pick up. <laughs> yeah, well, they have bad history. That's the problem. Bad history. Yeah. Okay, yeah. one one guy asked me, "Can you link uh, communism with atheism?" I said, "Uh, atheism well, I just quote, I, I, quote, I, 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 I quoted oh, oh. I, I quoted Lenin like um well if you take just the is atheism, atheism is the natural and inseparable part of communism." Bam. He's like, "He didn't know what he was talking about." No true atheist fallacy. Yeah, I I, I told an emperor atheist too that I studied religious persecution in Mongolia and Cambodia. Um, where Buddhism was, you know, dealt a really serious blow during the communist regime. And, you know, they did so because they were militantly atheists, as they portrayed themselves as um, many Buddhist monks you know, were shot and whatnot. Like, you know, and here's what's funny about that. Like, the atheists make it seem like, you know, no one had any idea that the communists were atheists. Um, it was a pretty widely known fact that they were atheists. I mean, even when you read Mein Kampf, my um Hitler calls well it's funny enough <laughs> Hitler pretty much calls anything he does it um you know he says you know that communism you know is a Jewish doctrine I mean uh, Marxism is a Jewish doctrine and that oh yeah and then it strips the man away from his spirituality and and teaches that he'll go yeah, to dust 
Jewish material materialism. That's what he called it. So and, I mean, uh, so I mean, yeah. Oh, um, so it was pretty widely known what they were. Would I be interested? Well, the thing of it. Go ahead. Snowman. Would I? Would I be interested in seeing? And kind of the way I think is how human psychology without God, in my personal view, I'd like to see how it leads to human psychology and groups would lead to that kind of a system. You know, if you were to rewind time and play it back again and how humans would develop something similar to communism, if you, you know, if you take God out of the equation, I think that could, that would happen as I think it's closely, I think it goes down to, you know, there are certain cores within communism, which are, you know, the, the basic help one another for the benefit of the society as a whole, that kind of thing. But I think it needs to be kind of looked at in a, you know, forgive me if I sound kind of crazy, a little bit uh, conspiracy theory, theory esque. Um, my, my brain likes to work in chunks. So, but how. Well, you're a snowman. Huh? Oh. It's, it's because so I'm a you, snowman. Yeah, you're, yeah, my brain's. Oh, melting. because you're melting. <laughs> I guess. No, just how it, how human biological psychology correlates with going into a system like that. Because communism, community, you kind of break it down into that. How secular humanism would be very similar. Utilitarianism would be very similar to communism. Actually, I was going to go into a whole rant on my YouTube channel, which I have nothing up on yet. But this kind of, this debate kind of inspired oh, dude, me to do you so. Really got, you really got to market yourself. You only got two people watching. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Maybe I'll. Uh, yeah, I got a market. I'm gonna start making videos. Cool. Um. Okay, so I'm going to end the live stream now, but we can continue talking. So yeah. Um. Definitely, viewers who uh, listen later, definitely go subscribe to Inspiring Philosophy. I'll probably leave a link to the debate later on. And uh, Christian truth should be spread through apologetics. And God bless.